Hey everyone, Mr. Dave here, and for this video I'm going to go through and actually demonstrate some of the uh, motion detection parameters and how you can adjust those and uh, hopefully uh, get uh, good motion detection on your system. So first off, we're definitely going to need to go out to our home page. and get our documentation open here and we're going to be looking for the motion detection parameters here so uh, open up the terminal here to actually get motion running um, so what I'm going to do for this particular video is uh, I'm going to actually uh, be replaying uh, one of the movies that actually uh, was created by uh, my home security system here so we can see what's going on with uh, some of the motion detection here. So um, to do that, uh, first off we'll need to make sure to make some edits to our motion.config file that we might have seen in some of the uh, previous videos. I'm going to actually use uh, to set up my camera is the uh, underneath the netcam URL there's actually a file option here which allows us to actually open up a uh, file an existing file um, and view it via motion so uh, off in Here, I'm going to actually take a look at this one here. So, just copy that name there, go back over to our terminal for the netcam URL. And then I'll actually use that as the camera value. Now, when we're actually doing the, the uh, motion configuration or the motion detection, um, it helps to actually uh, go into some of the items uh, to actually see it side by side. Uh, and this is actually mentioned at the very, very top of the um, motion guide as a general how-to setup. But what we're going to use is actually the stream preview method and we're going to use uh, stream preview method equal to three so it's going to show the full stream side by side with the motion image and with that allows us to actually see what's going on with the parameters or with the yeah the parameters for the motion detection so i'm just going to toss this one down here well it as option three and then while we're, we're here, I'm going to actually uh, change the web control parameters so that uh, we can actually control some of them on our web control page. And I think that's about it here. So we'll save this. Open up motion. Uh, it's given a warning on the... Uh, size here, so I'm going to actually adjust that. Doesn't have to exactly match, but... And keeping in mind that use the same parameter within the configuration file. The last one is the one that actually is used uh, for motion. So it did actually adjust that up. So we have something a bit more resolution associated with it. Go to our web control port. Uh, looks like we need to rotate this image here. Let's 
So we want to rotate it counterclockwise. So let's put that parameter right around here. The location actually does not matter. You just want to make sure that, it's, that uh, you don't have the same parameter less than twice because just like on the height parameter here, last one rules. So if rotate is actually specified further below, then that uh, parameter of rotate would override the one I'm typing in here. All right, so. Okay, so we have it uh, orientated the right way. And this was kind of a windy day, so you can actually see uh, there's some trees some shadows going here. We have a shadow of a wire here and, you know, some background stuff. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, click on the change configuration option. And the moment we'll actually uh, start off with what the noise level is. There may be some, we're going to turn off noise tune. This actually automatically tunes up the uh, motion, the uh, noise parameter. So we're going to turn it off so we can actually see the raw stuff. And then we're going to also get rid of the despeckle filter. And now we're going to play around with the noise parameter. So basically, I'm going to no manipulation whatsoever in the image here. And what the noise parameter does is actually um, determines the threshold by which it's going to ignore. Um, changes in the pixels. So keep in mind that for a particular pixel, its number is going to you know vary in between zero and 255. And what motion does is actually determine how much that pixel is changing image to image. So this is saying anything that's below 32 is actually going to get ignored. Now, if we actually go down all the way to zero, meaning every possible change in the pixel is going to actually show up, you can actually see what this does to the image. Although it looks like the image is not changing at all, there are very, very tiny changes in the pixel image that you know do not actually appear to the human eye. So. The other extreme is if you actually change the noise level to 255, which means it, nothing, it has to be an absolute 100% change in the pixel in order for motion to be detected. And what it shows here is actually nothing will come through on, in that particular circumstance. By default, motion actually has a value of 32. But you can actually adjust that as needed to determine the changes in color or changes in uh, the pixel right here. So let's actually go back. We'll go to we'll go back go to a value of 50. So the pixel has to change by more than 50 in order for it to register as motion. So you can see it actually trims down the amount of motion that's actually being detected here. So white specs are all of the motion. And we see right here the motion detection is the uh, time frame associated with it. And I guess the other thing to realize is that when you do use the uh, file parameter for a particular movie, it will go into a loop. So you actually see this is the exact same video being played over and over and over again here. So that actually is kind of the, the noise level and how you can actually uh, change it to suit your needs. Because, you know, for example, if we go down to value 15, then it's showing all of this stuff as changes in... Uh, motion within the picture here. Now, 
if you did want to actually keep this as a particular level, you're going to get a whole lot of motion being detected as part of this particular process. And what the application allows you to do is use something that's called the despeckle filter, which really gets rid of a lot of these little tiny changes associated with um, the image. The value that's usually is the default is E E D D L. So that's actually the default, and virtually any combination of these actually can be used. So if we actually click on this and give it a second for it to register, you'll notice virtually all of that background noise and speckles has actually been eliminated, associated with it. We're only left with one or two tiny little specks of motion being detected, even as uh, you know, kind of the picture gets adjusted. We're getting a little bit from here. I think if we actually, we can go down on the uh, threshold. And see some of the values that are actually coming through. It's probably an artificially low parameter here. And that's actually setting up uh, this one is as a picture. The other one I wanted to actually illustrate was the, uh, this is actually an, another video that could actually show some movement. So with this video, we actually have the squirrel that's actually showed moving across the screen here. And we can actually see what the uh, despeckle filter would actually do for us here. All right, it is actually already engaged. And... So on the despeckle filter, it will actually show items tagged as being counted as motion as the blue. So we can actually see the squirrel over here, and as he moves off out of the frame, the motion detection is actually going down but not a whole lot of other motion other than the, the squirrel in this particular video here. And that's generally the options associated with setting up the noise, the noise tune, adjust things up the noise level up or down according to the video. And then we have the despeckle filter, which is going to get rid of a lot of the uh, small noise that's actually occurring. Um, even after the noise level uh, filter has actually been applied. 